Right now, everything is pointing to a sudden Bitcoin. Well, I'm not spoiling the surprise. I'll reveal at the end if I'm bullish or bearish. Because next week, the US is expected to drop interest rates. This could be either very good for crypto or very bad. And I mean very bad. A scenario could play out that would crush crypto, stocks and every other market. One that nobody is talking about. So today, I'm breaking down exactly what's coming next week to answer the big question. Should we be bullish or bearish next week? Actually, not only next week, but for the rest of September. This is going to be fun. But before we start, guys, if this video gets 2000 likes, I'm going to start live streaming. What you're watching now is pre-recorded. I'm thinking about doing alpha live streams so I can share the latest alpha with you as it happens. If that sounds cool, smash that like button. 2000 likes and I'll start live streaming. But before we get started, here is a quick reminder that this is not financial advice and I am not a financial advisor. This video is not intended for UK consumers. Don't invest unless you're prepared to lose all the money you invest. Crypto is a high risk investment and largely unregulated. You are unlikely to be protected if something goes wrong. If you're not in the UK, let's get started. Let's kick things off with a review of this week. This is super important, guys, so we can fully understand what's coming next week. And this week has been pretty crazy. From unexpected economic data, which could have a huge impact on crypto. More on that in a few minutes. To one of the biggest stock market bear traps in recent memory. It's been an exciting week. So let's break down the essential events from last week that will impact us this coming week. The big news next week is interest rates. But like I said earlier, these could be very bullish or very bearish for us. We need to break down what happened this week to figure out how this is going to go. So watch this part. The first big event this week was the presidential debate. Now, I admit, guys, I was expecting crypto to be part of the debate. But to my surprise, they didn't even mention crypto once. Did you expect them to talk about crypto? Drop a comment below and let me know. Of course, the Democrats say Harris won and the Republicans say Trump won. But the most important thing for us is crypto didn't lose because it wasn't mentioned. So I guess that's good. No news is better than bad news. But I'll break down the debate later because it could have big implications for the rest of September, especially since Trump said he won't do another debate. On the political front, there's one big news event that just makes me so, so happy. Our best mate, Gary Gensler, is back in the hot seat. Right now, he's under investigation over his hiring practices. Apparently, he's been favouring hiring Democrats who align with his views, which is really bad because regulators need balanced opinions. It looks like Gaza is just stacking the odds in his favour. So, he's under investigation. I love it. Look, this could be a nothing burger. Maybe, maybe not. But what do you think? Is Gaza guilty or innocent? Comment below with either guilty or innocent and let me know. I think he's guilty. So what about outside of politics? Well, TradFi people have returned from their summer holidays, so volume is increasing. The dead months are behind us. Like, these guys really came back and put on a show in the stock market. On Wednesday, the stock market dipped hard, a reason I'll go into shortly, but by the end of the day, the markets actually made a recovery and then some. This is one of the craziest bear traps I've seen in stocks. A lot of people got caught on this one. One of the big things was the Nvidia CEO just got out there and blurted some crazy bullish stuff which pumped stocks and left bears stranded. Talk about market manipulation. But we'll talk more about his antics later because they are very important for next week too. But a quick summary is that AI and tech performed pretty well this week, which does have a knock-on effect on crypto. But the biggest news by far this week was the CPI and the core CPI. In case you don't know, the Consumer Price Index measures how much people like me and you pay for goods and services. These numbers are all about understanding and controlling inflation, which directly impacts people living in the US, but also indirectly impacts the entire world because the US is the world's leading economy. Now, 
I need you to remember this because it's super important. The CPI came in as expected at 2.5%, which is good. But the core CPI, arguably more important, came in hot at 0.3%, a rise over last month and higher than the 0.2% expectation. Now, this can be seen as very good or very bad. I'll explain this more in a minute when we talk about next week. Now, the PPI, which is the producer price index, also came in hot. So inflation in the US is actually climbing again. Inflation is generally not a good thing for crypto. So this could have profound implications. Which leads us to the big question. Am I bullish or bearish for next week and actually for the rest of September? Let's break down what's coming next week for some clues. We're going to have a bit of fun with this one. I'll list all the bullish and bearish points. Then we see who comes out ahead and answer if I'm bullish or bearish. So the big news this week is interest rate cuts are coming. Everyone thinks this is a bullish event. And in most cases it is. But we need to talk about a bearish scenario, one that could be very bad for crypto. So let me break down how interest rate cuts work. Look, this next part will be boring, but it is so important that you understand it because interest rates will have a massive impact on crypto this cycle. The Fed's job is to keep inflation at 2%. Anything higher means prices of goods and services rise too fast, which is bad for the economy. When inflation rises above this target, the Fed raises interest rates. Higher rates make borrowing more expensive, which slows down spending and helps control inflation. Basically, if borrowing money is expensive, people buy less. And when people buy less, prices tend to go down. But high rates aren't great because they can slow the economy too much. When loans for homes, cars and businesses become too expensive, spending and investment can decrease leading to fewer jobs and slower economic growth. So they raise rates to stop inflation and then they need to lower them before the economy crashes. OK, the boring part's over. If you feel you understand why the Fed raises and lowers rates now, smash that like button. It lets me know I've done a good job explaining it. Right now, we're at the point in this rate cycle when rates need to be cut to avoid economic collapse. But it's not that easy. As Henrik Zabur says, the Fed is always late with rate cuts as their inflation mandate forces them to look out the rear window. This means that by the time they lower rates, the economy is usually broken, so badly broken that it's too late to fix it by lowering rates. And the Fed goes into panic mode, cutting rates by 0.5%, also known as 50 basis points. Average cuts are only 25 basis points, 0.25% when things are okay. So generally a cut of 50 basis points or more means something is very wrong with the economy and the Fed is slashing rates to lower borrowing costs and get people spending again. Back in 2020, when COVID was wreaking havoc on the economy, the Fed did an emergency 50 basis point cut, followed a few weeks later by a 100 basis point cut. That was true panic spurred by the historic March 2020 market crash. What this all means is that on Wednesday, September 18th, we will find out if the Fed is cutting by 25 or 50 basis points. 25 basis points is considered bullish. This means they expect inflation to fall back to its target range of 2% and the economy looks to be in decent shape. 50 basis points is considered bearish because whilst its good rates are being cut, it means the Fed thinks the economy is in such bad shape that a large emergency cut is needed. So the big question I promised I would answer at the start, am I bullish or bearish next week? Let's break it down. First, the US unemployment rate fell from 4.3% in July to 4.2% in August, and other indicators show unemployment falling. This is a good sign for the economy, and it means the Fed is more likely to opt for a 25 basis point cut instead of 50. So, one point to the bullish scenario. Earlier, I talked about CPI numbers. The CPI is how the Fed calculates inflation. The CPI came out as expected at 2.5%, which means inflation is lowering at a steady pace. But the core CPI, 
which is actually the main thing the Fed looks at, came in hot. It was expected to be 0.2%, it was actually 0.3%. This shows that inflation is not fully stamped out, and whilst it may be trending down overall, it's not a smooth trend. This supports a 25 basis point cut and not a 50 basis point cut. So, another point to the bullish scenario. Next, we have PPI. This is a producer price index. Basically, it shows how much producers are paying for goods and services. If producers pay more, they usually pass the cost on to consumers. The PPI came in at 0.2%, which was higher than expected. This means that inflation is still a thing, so it supports a more cautious 25 basis point cut. The fact is, all the data I've seen supports a 25 basis point cut. That is three points for the bullish scenario. I have seen nothing to convince me that we will see a 50 basis point cut next week. But wait, I'm not telling you to go all in long on Bitcoin and alts because I'm unsure if I'm bullish or bearish overall. My assessment of interest rates has me leaning a little bullish, but let's explore some more data. Maybe there's some bearish stuff coming up. Actually, I have a really simple one. You might already know this one, but September is one of the most bearish months of the year for Bitcoin. It would be out of character for Bitcoin to close bullish this month. So that's one point for the bearish scenario. The bears are going to get another point, actually. We talked about the debate this week. Republicans claim Trump won and Democrats claim Harris won. What's clear to me is that there is no clear winner. Now, polls show that the odds are equalizing. A Harris victory is seen as bad for crypto, so equal polls are definitely a point in the bears' favor. So that's three for the bulls and two for the bears. But the bears are about to equalize because there's something else going on in the world that most crypto people aren't talking about. They do not realize that this is a big warning sign. The Japanese economy is in trouble. Things are not looking good in Japan. Now, why do we care about this? Well, when Japan starts raising interest rates, it's historically pretty bad for US markets. I won't get into the complex reasoning, but historically, there's a correlation between Japan raising rates and US recessions within a 12-month period. Traders outside of crypto know what's brewing in Japan isn't great, so I'm going to give another point to the bearish scenario. We are now tied, but just a small disclaimer, the whole Japan thing, I think there's solid reasoning to argue that this time is different. Those are dangerous words in investing, but I think it might be different. If you want to discuss this more, join my free Discord. We have these sorts of debates all the time. There's a link below. But yeah, we're now tied. So am I bullish or bearish for September? We need to look at more data to decide. And this next one is juicy. The global M2 money supply is rising. If you don't know what M2 is, it measures all the cash, checking and savings deposits, plus some types of investment available worldwide. It shows how much money is circulating globally. To keep it simple, when more money is circulating globally, some of it finds its way into risk markets like stocks and crypto. And right now, the money supply is going up, which is bullish. Another point to the bullish scenario, four to three. Let's speed this up, shall we? The yield curve has recently uninverted. This means that long-term interest rates have risen above short-term rates again in the bond market. We're blitzing through, so I'll skip the details. Come to my Discord if you want to know more. But this is often seen as a sign that recession is near. Another point to bears, 4-4. Global liquidity is increasing. This measures how much money and credit is available worldwide for spending and investment. It affects how easily people and businesses can get loans, invest and grow economically. It's going up is very bullish. It is heavily correlated with bull runs in Bitcoin and other financial markets. Five to four, let's go bulls. FTX repayments are finally starting. FTX was one of the biggest crypto exchanges ever. It collapsed in 2022 and all its users lost their funds. In quarter four, FTX creditors will start being repaid 16 billion in US dollars. I think much of that money will head back into alts. Whilst this is in quarter four and not September, we will get more and more news about this as we get closer to quarter four. It is possible people will start buying ahead of the expected 16 billion dollar influx. Bullish. Six, 
to four. I talked about this one in my last video, BlackRock is buying. They've been buying dips on both Bitcoin and ETH. In my opinion, if BlackRock is buying, they are bullish and maybe they think the bottom is in. This makes me bullish on financial markets. Seven to four. This one, not everyone might agree, but a major risk for the markets is the AI bubble popping. If it does, stocks crash and crypto probably goes with it. The leading AI company right now is NVIDIA. In fact, one of the reasons for some of the recent downturns is that the NVIDIA CEO was taking profit, which led to fears that the stock would crash. Also, we talked about last week, fake news spread about Nvidia being under investigation, which led to a dump that impacted crypto too. Well, now the Nvidia CEO will not stop saying bullish things and it's pumping Nvidia. Pumps in the stock market are good for Bitcoin and crypto. Bullish. Eight to four. Bitcoin just had a golden cross on the two month chart. Past cycles show this is where the bull run kicked off. Nine to four. Fear and Greed Index is trending up. It's the highest it's been in two weeks. This indicates it bottomed out. Bullish. 10 to 4. This one is only going to be a half point. Token 2049 starts next week. The biggest crypto conference of the year. All the biggest projects will be there dropping the top alpha they have for 2024. Lots of attention to crypto. Lots of attention to alts. 10.5 to 4. Guys, I could go on, but this video is getting really long. I'm going to finish it here. I am bullish for September. This does not mean I'm saying go buy crypto or stocks. I am doing nothing until I see what the Fed does with interest rates. A 50 basis point cut would straight up give five points to the bear scenario. That would be crazy. So we don't have a clear direction until the rate cut happens. Also, I do not give financial advice. You need to do your own research. I'm just assessing the data and sharing my opinion. Personally, I'm bullish on financial markets and I'm sitting on my hands and waiting to see what the Fed does. Now, that was an adventure. If you enjoyed it, smash that like button, guys. And if you want to learn more about the potential upcoming recession and why I think it's not happening, check out my video from last week. But until next time, guys, remember, trade smart, don't be a dumbass. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.